This is Susanna Magenheimer, Random Artist 222, and I'm part of Sean Petit's creative design team. And my project for this session is a take on watercolor. Um, I showed this on Sean Petit's Facebook group, and it got a lot of good responses, so I thought it'd be the perfect project to show how I accomplished it. Um, as you see here, these are the stencils that I used. Um, I used the cotton stems, Flourish, uh, Flower Silhouette 4, Garden 2, uh, Flower Gang 5, and this lovely one here, uh, Flower Silhouette 1. And I put these together in a way that it would give me the effect of a floral bouquet. And um, something that, like I said, crosses over from watercolor to those old masters oil paintings. Not that I'm anywhere near good as that, but just that effect um, inspired me. You're going to need the stencils or, um, and you're going to need some sprays. And I'm using most of the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays this time. But any spray, anything you like works. So don't feel like you have to use these colors to make the effect happen. Um, I'm using some ink pads to add some dimension later on and also some dimensional glues. So let me bring, let me clear this up and then I'll be right back to show you what we're going to create. Okay, so here's the inspiration piece, and it's not the original because I gave my mom for Christmas the original. She adores poinsettias, and I have to say that Sean's probably got some of the prettiest poinsettia stencils out there, um, and they can be manipulated in many ways. This print that I did um, is pretty accurate to what I gave my mom. Um, you can see here the um, dimensional, let me just put this down, see that effect, that dimensional gold that I put in the center? That's actually watercolor that I put around it to give it some more dimension. Um, and what I'm trying to show here in this project is how I created the speckling effect, um, stippling, whatever you want to call it, a take on pointillism. I like the fact that if you look here in the light, no, 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 the glare is going to get, you see how the way I sprayed it created these speckles, um, the pointillism effect, and kind of disappears into the background. And I love that effect. And um, it was one of those, um, what I call happy accidents. Um, and then it's a matter from there, layering how much you want to do. Now this, I would call my elegant version. It's the way it is. It's I added a little bit of highlights throughout the piece with pastels and other um, inks and things that I'll show you as well. But you could also have taken this and, you know, created your own um, outlines, doodles, whatever you want to take it to a different level. So um, it's a very unique project in the sense that you can go from something super elegant to something very mixed media, whimsical kind of. So let me show you how I do this. So here's some of the initial things um, is watercolor paper. I like the watercolor paper because of the way the sprays diffuse on them. Um, you could do this on hard, uh, well, hard um, paper as well, non-watercolor paper, I should say. Um, but I, like I said, I like the effect of this. And this is B, like B-E-E, -E, um, watercolor paper. They make a really nice weighted watercolor cold press, and it's also um, reasonably, reasonably priced. Especially if you're trying techniques out and you haven't gotten it quite down, um, you want something that you can play on that you're not going to spend a lot of money on and then go up um, the food chain, so to speak, on the, the quality. Um, I'm going to demonstrate with a couple of stencils and then go into the full bouquet, but I want you to um, not be bored watching me spray a bunch of things. But this is what I sprayed first, was her um, hydrangea effect um, stencil. And as you can see, I... I spray very hard here. This is where I'm aiming and the splatter hits this way. So that's how I'm creating this effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this right here. Since I already have this as my centerpiece, um, I'm gonna show you how I do this. Now, it's very important when you're working with sprays to have some kind of splatter box. Um, you don't need anything super fancy. Like this is one of the ones that are on the market that I just did to try out. My problem with it, it's very narrow. Um, so, you know, I go and get a box or, you know, when I get something from um, uh, a store that I purchased from, I just take that box and I 
plop it down to where I, what I need and what I want. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use this box. You also need, it's very handy to have um, some of these index cards, just throwaway index cards as I call them, and just a little bit of tape. And what I do with my tape, so you know, is um, I don't, if I put it like, sometimes when you put tape on something, tape, fresh tape on a piece of paper and then pull it back, you might rip. So what I do is I put it on my clothes and I just pull it back until I get a nice, um, I still get stick, but I'm not gonna, you know, adhere my stencil to it. So we have the, the floral piece that I sprayed and it's the exact same thing as I'm gonna show you with the leaf. So there's nothing different here. I just wanted to start something so that you could see um, how it looks as the way it's intended to look. Um, so now I'm gonna bring this down. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, this um, flower is underneath, right? And I don't want to necessarily cover it up. And the beauty of this process, and let me grab one of my stent doubles here. The beauty of this process is that you can have these stencils overlapping because when you go back and you're going to add more dimension with inks or pastels or whatever you're going to use, um, those things tend to disappear into the background. So I'm not freaked out if, you know, some splatter ends up here or there. I know I can work the shading or... Um, I can work the shading into a way that it's going to be totally distracting and you won't even know that it's there. So that's what I also love about this process. It's really no way to screw it up. Okay, so um, I know though that this flower is here and I really don't want to cover up the whole flower. So I'm going to take my tape. Oops. One of my famous whoops. And um, something really easy to do is just put a, like a heavy um, tube of paint. And now you have to be very cognizant. Uh, you have a leaf here, right? And you don't want that one to get captured with the spray. And you have these little guys and you don't want that captured in the spray. And then you have this side piece that you don't want that captured in the spray. Remember, you have a flower under here that you don't want the whole thing covered. So you're gonna put a piece of paper right here. And also I should probably add right now, when you use sprays, it's messy. And I have found probably the best product for getting most of it off my hands, um, the Ranger Scrubby. And that is just, uh, it looks like styrofoam actually, and you just wipe it uh, underwater and it pretty much takes most of it off. So I'm not afraid to get my hands all inky and messy. Now you can see here, there's a little bit of the flower that's still there. I don't care, because that's gonna be something that I can hide because I'm gonna highlight my leaves eventually. So now here comes the process. I'm gonna take my spray and instead of spraying straight down, which you don't want, what I'm gonna do is I'm spraying it from the side that I'm going sideways. Let me see if I can do this. See that I'm actually sideways. So I'm blasting it from here this way. Okay, and I'm looking over it just to make sure, and the greens hit everywhere, and just a little bit of green on the top, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna come in here, just dab it down. Okay. And I love her stencils because so far as I've been doing this process, I haven't had it seep too much underneath the stencil, which is great. But again, not a big deal because this is a very abstract process. So let me take this out and show you what I did. So you see here, the strongest part of the spray blast was here, and it's a little bit random, but for the most part it's at the base. And then I got the speckle effect up here and into even this lightest piece here. So that's what you're after. Again, let me show you down here. That was the hardest hitting point of the spray as it goes this way. And I end up with that lighter spray effect, that little speckly goodness. Okay. All right. So now let me show you the next part. We don't need, once you spray all your flowers and everything, you don't need that box anymore. She has what I call it, what, what she calls a flourish stencil. And this is when, well, once you have all your flowers put out the way you want. And let me show you one of my stent doubles to show you exactly what I mean. 
well this was a stump double sorry so in this case I have a leaf here I have the centerpiece here and I'm just trying out different doodles and things over here but basically like I said you're setting up your your um your elements and what I wanted to do and I'll just do it on this one is I wanted to create some kind of ethereal sticks kind of thing in the piece so I'm grabbing cop coffee archival ink which is the best inks to use because they do not run and um, they play very nice with all mediums so they're my go-to but let's say here okay I have this space now right here and instead of putting a leaf or another flower what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here okay so I'm just going to very lightly use a light hand because you know it depends on what you want okay and you want to see where it's going to hit underneath okay so this is a very light touch I'm going to do it like this so you can see okay and to me that looks really cool it's in the background it's it's a nice little focal piece um, it doesn't um, get too busy with the the overall um, thing that I want to do um, over here I have a little spot so I'm going to bring over anything that kind of in this stencil the floor stencil that looks ten like tendrils like vines like sticks and I have this one here that looks like a tendril and again I'm going over the blue flower but it doesn't matter because it's it's going to get um, highlighted with different things um, parts of this are going to disappear in the way you highlight the pieces below it and again just use a very light hand I went a little heavy there but let's make this one heavier just so you can see the difference okay so you can see that this is a very much more heavier a heavier take on this and again because I know I'm going to come back with red ink in here to highlight or sorry green ink solid dark green ink to highlight this I'm not too worried about that and as a matter of fact let me show you that now okay so we had just put position this um, vine like I said out of the flourishes so that um, it gives that effect uh, and I'm going to bring back one of my stencils because I want to show you how you make that disappear now so you don't have to worry when you're doing this this, this technique all right so now I'm going to stick this over here this is one I've been using so it's needs a little more stick them all right so now I'm going to take the apple teeny from oops sorry about that w plus nine and what I like to do is I don't have three hands so I'm going to well I don't need okay this time I'm going to use a sponge dauber because I know I want to do a lot more um, stenciling so here's that brown piece and what I'm going to do now is I always like going up towards the direction of so I'm not covering the speckles okay so I'm going to go like that and I want the ones way below to be super dark green so I'm doing that on purpose um, obviously there's no red in but there's reflection so I'm leaving a little bit of red in that bottom piece okay so before I pull this off and show you how that disappeared I'm going to grab my red and now I'm going to bring this in I can show you here I covered that up so now I have my green base of this hydrangea and then that vine that I created that effect on it pretty much disappears here right because the green is now covering that and it pushes this flower into the background so it's just a matter of how you play and what you want to do with it that creates your um, your dimension I do have a stent double of one where I went and highlighted a lot of these flowers that I'll show you right now so you can see how effective this technique is 
see here's the browns, the twigs effects. You don't even see them going into, you know, like here, there was some blue overlap in the blue um, delphiniums. And um, you can't even see it because I went and added a little bit more darker ink in here. But I still, I'm going to try to get in close. Okay, I still got the effect of the speckles. I don't want to lose that. That's the whole point of this um, technique. And if I wanted to, I could go back and make these leaves even darker if I want them to look like they're in the foreground or in the background. But I was really happy with the way this one came out. So this is the one that I'm going to take to the next step. Okay, so the final part of this is I'm going to show you how the watercolor effect happens. Now I showed you my stunt double here where I've already added all the highlights to it, the, the flowers themselves. This is just the first step in the highlighting of them. Um, the second part is creating depth in them. And what I like to do is I use some um, Payne's Gray from Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, Fine Art Watercolor. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of water here. That's all you need. See, that's a teeny tiny drop. Okay, so I want to add some depth to this, and I'm going to use this one because I'm still working on the other one, and I'm going to add some other fi finishes on that. So the beautiful thing about watercolor is it follows the water. Okay, so my water's a little dirty, but that's all right. You'll actually get to see it better. So if you imagine that's clear water and you drop that in, your water is going to, watercolor is going to start moving in it. And it's not going to go beyond where the water is. If you find that your color is too heavy and you're not happy with it, you tap it and it'll pull most of it off. So now I'm dropping in the watercolor. Oops. And it's going to follow those paths of the water that I just laid out. See how that's going just along. And it's a little dark. So I'm going to bring that out a little bit. And this is just a matter of taste, how much you want to put in and how much you don't. In my, um, in my original art piece, I just wanted enough in the centers to create that kind of a depth to it, the shadows that would be way deep in the, in the background. I didn't put it all throughout the petals. So again, those are choices you make as you create your pieces. Okay, so what I'm going to do off camera is what you see here with the watercolor, but I'm also going to do what you see here. And this is what I call taking it from that elegant look to more of a mixed media vibe to it. Okay, so what you see here, let me just zoom in there, is I went ahead and just started doodling, which is I took a black micron pen and just started outlining the petals. I started using uh, some of the gel pens and adding some texture inside the petals. Um, on this one, I just went ahead and just outlined, you know, one side of the petals to give it a kind of like a shadow effect. Um, so it can be whatever you want. Okay, so now here's where I start fine tuning some things. And um, I started showing you that a little bit earlier, but now that I laid down my flowers and the arrangement that I wanted, and then went back over each stencil with some ink pads and added some dimension, as you can see here. Um, I even added a little bit more to the leaves to give them a darker um, hue. Um, and so now what I do is just the fine detailing. So here's where I show some of my crafting tools that I use for fine detailing. Um, I like my Jelly Roll Moonlighting pens. They're very bright. Um, and they add a really nice dimension. Um, I love my Micron pen to outline. 
um, jelly roll pens. They come in three sizes, and I have them all because you need them all <laughs> um, to add more additional highlights. And for those of you who have Uni Posca, this is an acrylic paint pen to add even more detail. And again, always you can refer back to ink pads and try to choose ink pads too that are archival or, or have some type of permanence to them. Um, you could also use pastel chalks to add even more dimension. I mean, the world is your oyster in terms of dimension. But I thought I'd show you some of what I do. And then I'll show you the final piece when I'm done. Um, so I'm bringing back the stencil over here because I decided I wanted to add just a little bit of um, I already had added, I'm gonna that. let me get in close here, I already had added some blue ink pad to pop those speckles that you can see there and there, but I wanted to add just a little bit more depth to the flower, so I'm bringing the stencil back. like so, oops, okay, and normally I would tape it down, but I'm just doing very, very light um, enhancing, so I'm just going to I don't know if you can see that, but it's just starting to make the base have a little bit more shadow to it because it's deeper into the bouquet. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's deeper in the bouquet. So I'm just adding that little addition and you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can hopefully see how that adds a little bit more dimension to it. Okay, um, one of the other things I like to do is with my micron pen and you don't have to be perfect on this um, again it's your piece it's up to you what you want to do so as you see here I just outlined that um, and then I'm going to do this petal really quick because I'm going to show you two different things Okay, so now you could outline all your petals, and that's what probably I would do. But I don't want to obliterate um, everything that I've done in terms of shading in here. But um, one thing, and I always test it on my finger to make sure that the pen's alive, is um, to go in here and just add some, add some fun to it. And I always go in the direction kind of like what a petal would be, so I'm following the actual outline of the petal. Now I'm coming in, I'm not connecting the line. And again, I'm just following inside the petal lines. Whoops. I have something that I'm really happy with. And then what I do is I can come back you know, just add a few white dots for highlighting, however you want to do. And then um, another thing you can do is use liquid pearls, any kind of dimensional glues that are out there. And what I like to do, and I did this on the poinsettia that I showed you earlier, is come in here and just set them up. And I like doing this because it brings the flower kind of to life seeing the actual um, the 
little bloom things. And this, I like these liquid pearls because you can go really small. And they're usually self-leveling, um, but sometimes if you, they're too pointy. Let me see if I can do this in the camera. They're a little pointy, so you just tap it underneath very lightly, and it will round them out. Okay, and just remember to cap what you use. Um, something else I might do over on this flower is um, outline it as well, but I'm going to show you this. I'm going to go ahead and just create these little pops in here. And with a blue moonlighter, I'm going to add some Just a little outline. And you don't have to be an artist to do this, as you can see. You can just go to town and just do what you want to do. Now, like I said, you can leave it very elegantly and don't do the doodling, or you can amp it up to a mixed media piece and do that kind of doodling to it. Um, and don't, forget, don't be afraid to go like outside the flower, like in these purple ones up here. I just would come in. And give the illusion of those pollen pops or whatever you call them, you know, coming out of the flower. Um, I could also, Choose a different color and um, come in here. Just add again some little highlights. At the very end of this whole thing, you're going to sit here and go, well, what are you going to do with all this white spot, all this white background? And personally, some of it I'm very happy with. Um, but you can um, do this. If you want a little bit more, you, if you don't want to add like a deeper purple in there or a lighter purple watercolor or what, whatever you're using pastel, um, you can take, in this case, this is Glimmer Mist from Tattered Angels, um, vintage paper. And it's a very, very soft, 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 soft beige. And I don't have my box, so bear with me here. But what I would do at the very end when everything's done is just, well, when I always test spray off to the side, just to make sure it's coming out powdery. Okay, and I take a damp cloth, a damp cloth, I'm sorry, a dry paper towel. And you can see now I've actually added background to my piece so that it's not a stark um, beige or whatever you want to call this off shell, eggshell kind of background. Um, so that's one way to do that to add even more dimension to the whole piece. Um, and when I come back, you'll see the final product with all this applied to it. So that's what I've got for you. Remember to please subscribe, comment. Um, if you found this inspiring, I really appreciate the subscriptions. And um, have a great day.